Hello, my name is Alberto Pinzon. I'm a neurologist and an epileptologist here in the Neurology Group. And I want to talk to you today about epilepsy. So what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a medical condition that is characterized by recurrent seizures that are unprovoked. When you suffer two or more unprovoked seizures, by definition, it's called epilepsy. A seizure will be suffered by one in 10 people in this planet. That's a tremendous amount of people and one in 26 will suffer epilepsy. From those people that suffer epilepsy, there's gonna be a group that is gonna be very difficult to manage. From that uh, group of patients that we start medications, initially 50% will be controlled on the first medication, but there will be 50% that will not be controlled. If you add a second or third medication, another 20 to 30% may be controlled, but there's gonna be a 20 to 30% of people that are gonna remain uncontrolled despite any medications that you give the patient. So that's where we come in place, uh, the epileptologist. Uh, according to the American Academy of Neurology, uh, the quality measures in epilepsy, it is recommended that you have suffered uh, of epilepsy for more than three years and you have failed medications, that you should be evaluated by a person or an epileptologist in an epilepsy center. And uh, why is that? Because medications is not always the only solution that we have for seizures. We have different types of uh, uh, epilepsies and different types of alternatives. There will be surgical, that could be resective, non-resective. We have devices that can control seizures. We have diets that can control seizures. And sometimes these patients that do not respond well to medications may not be even seizures. There may be something completely different and they need the help and the evaluation that they have that they need accordingly. So for example, here I have one of the workups that I do for patients. EEG or electroencephalographic data is one of the most important steps to characterize if indeed a patient is having seizures. Like this case, we see significant electrical abnormal activity in the brain. And then we can say really that this patient is having actual seizures. And when we do that, we see, okay, is this seizure coming from an eloquent region? Or is this seizure coming from an area in the brain that may not be so eloquent, may be not functional actually, and the only thing that is causing is trouble? What is the difference? If it's an eloquent region, we would not like to touch it surgically, but if it is an area that is not that functional or it's not that eloquent, maybe we can remove it, and that area that is malfunctioning, uh, once that we take it out, will stop the seizures. So that's just an example of what we do. And this requires a significant amount of testing may require hospitalization in which we look at your seizures, we will do other imaging testing. And after that, not only me, but a group of doctors would get together to analyze all the data, imaging, even neuropsychology testing to see cognitive functioning, to decide if a patient would benefit even from a surgical alternative. So if you have refractory epilepsy, don't doubt to talk to your physician, to your primary care physician, to your neurologist, is to see if you will be a candidate to talk to an epilepsy doctor to offer you other alternatives. And these alternatives many times work well and sometimes can be even cured. So don't forget to talk to your doctor. We are here to help you. Again, Alberto Pinzon, Neurology and Epilepsy. Thank you.